Imagine a world where every whisper, every secret, every moment is observed, catalogued and traded in the shadows. Picture an unseen realm where your most private worlds are no longer yours alone. This is not the plot of a dystopian novel, but the reality of our digital age. This is the world of the internet, a world that extends far beyond the pages we browse and the posts we like. It's a labyrinth of information, a web of connections, a vast reservoir of data that we navigate each day. But beneath this familiar surface lies another layer, a deeper, darker layer that we rarely see. It's a realm where our digital footprints, the traces we leave behind with every click and every scroll, become the keys to unlocking our secrets. Welcome to the unseen layers of the internet, a realm where the digital footprints you leave behind become the keys to unlocking your most private worlds. On the surface, the internet is a bustling metropolis of information and connection, a lively digital cityscape where knowledge and novelty coexist, where we meet, share, learn and explore. It's an ever-growing expanse of opportunities, a playground of possibilities at our fingertips. Yet, like a placid lake reflecting a serene landscape, the surface of the internet can be deceiving. Let's delve a little deeper. Picture this, each click, each search, each seemingly harmless digital interaction leaves behind an invisible trail, a breadcrumb trail, if you will, a trail that leads right back to you. Your preferences, your habits, your interests, all recorded and remembered, and not just by your device or your browser, but by a vast network of unseen entities operating beneath the surface. Now, you might be thinking, but I'm not interesting enough. Why would anyone care about my data? Well, in the grand scheme of things, it's not about you or me as individuals. It's about the collective patterns that emerge when our data is compiled and analyzed on a massive scale. It's about the power and the profit that come from predicting and influencing our behavior. So who are these unseen entities? They're data miners, companies that collect and analyze our digital footprints to create detailed profiles of our online personas. They are the algorithms tirelessly working in the background learning our preferences and shaping our online experiences. And they're the advertisers who use these insights to tailor their messages and maximize their reach. In this digital age, your personal data is the new gold. It's a precious commodity, highly sought after and fiercely traded. And just like gold miners of the old, data miners are constantly digging, sifting through the digital dirt to strike it rich. On the surface, the internet may seem like a safe space, a haven of information and connection. But remember, behind every friendly interface, data miners and algorithms are tirelessly cataloging your habits, preferences and secrets. It's an illusion of safety, a digital masquerade that conceals a much deeper, much more complex reality. Dive deeper and the waters darken. As we plunge beneath the surface web's sparkling facade, we encounter a different universe, a realm far more vast, where the sunlight of everyday browsing barely penetrates. Welcome to the Deep Web. The Deep Web, contrary to its somewhat sinister name, is not inherently evil. It's merely the part of the internet that's not indexed by search engines. Here, you'll find databases, libraries, and members-only websites, along with emails and intranet systems. It's like the backstage of the internet, where all the behind-the-scenes action happens. But why is it unindexed? Well, some content simply doesn't need to be found by the average user, like databases that store medical records or legal documents. Other times it's because the content is private, like your emails or online banking details. And yes, it's also a sanctuary for those who want to stay anonymous and operate outside the public eye. Now imagine a gargantuan iceberg. The tip of it, visible above the water, represents the surface web, while the massive chunk beneath the waterline is the deep web. It's estimated that the deep web could be 400 to 5,000 times larger than the surface web. But don't be mistaken, accessing the deep web isn't a nefarious act. You're likely interacting with it more often than you realize. Every time you log into your email, use online banking, or access a secure database, you're dipping your toes into the deep web's waters. Yet the deep web's vastness and obscurity also make it a fertile ground for activities that shun the light. Untraceable financial transactions, illicit marketplaces and anonymous forums thrive here, away from prying eyes. Here in the vast expanse of the deep web lies a parallel universe 
hidden from the casual surfer, a place where anonymity reigns and the unseeable is seen. It's a world that's both intriguing and intimidating, a testament to the dual nature of the internet. As we venture deeper, remember, the internet is a double-edged sword. It can empower and it can exploit. It's all about how we choose to wield it. Deeper still lies the dark web. In the farthest reaches of the digital universe, away from the prying eyes of search engines and mainstream browsers, exists a nebulous realm known as the dark web. In this uncharted territory, the line between good and evil often blurs, creating a world of contradictions. The dark web can be a dangerous place, teeming with illicit activities. From underground marketplaces trading in everything from stolen identities to illegal substances, to forums fostering cybercrime and terrorism, the dark web is often seen as the internet's shadowy underbelly. It's a haven for those who thrive in the darkness, away from the watchful gaze of law enforcement and moral scrutiny. But the dark web is not just a den of iniquity, it's also a beacon of freedom, a refuge for those who value their privacy and anonymity. It's a place where political dissidents can share their views without fear of retribution, where whistleblowers can expose corruption without revealing their identities, where journalists can communicate with sources without endangering their lives. It's a sanctuary for the oppressed, a platform for free speech in countries where such rights are trampled upon. In this paradoxical realm, the same technology that shields the malevolent also protects the benevolent. The dark web is a testament to the double-edged nature of technology. On one side, it can be a tool for harm, a weapon wielded by those with nefarious intentions. On the other, it can be a shield, a safeguard for those who seek to uphold justice and freedom. To understand the dark web, we must grapple with these complexities. We must acknowledge that technology in itself is neutral. It's the use or misuse of technology that tints it with shades of morality. It's in this realm of the dark web that we see the true power of the internet in its rawest form. It's a world where freedom from surveillance empowers both the good and the evil. Here, freedom from surveillance empowers both the protector and the predator. In the digital age, your data is the currency. A simple sentence with a profound implication. Every time you log on to your favorite social media platform, every time you browse for the latest gadget, or even when you're just checking the weather, you're in a transaction, paying with your personal information. The digital world thrives on convenience. It's a world where a simple voice command can turn off your lights, where your fridge can order groceries when you're running low, and where your favorite show is just a click away. It's a world that's been built around making our lives easier, more comfortable, and more efficient. But this convenience comes with a cost, a cost that isn't always apparent, a cost that's often hidden behind the allure of instant gratification. It's the cost of our privacy. Each and every digital interaction leaves behind a digital footprint, a breadcrumb trail that tells a story about us. Our likes, dislikes, habits, and preferences all catalogued, analyzed, and often sold to the highest bidder. This data, our data, is used to create a digital persona of us, an avatar that reflects who we are, what we like, and even what we might do in the future. It's used to target us with tailored adverts, to influence our decisions, and in some cases, to manipulate our behavior. This isn't to say that convenience is inherently bad. It's not. Convenience is a wonderful thing. It saves us time, it saves us effort, and it can even save us money. But it's crucial that we understand the trade-off we're making. It's important that we recognize that every digital convenience comes at a price, the price of our personal data. So we find ourselves at a crossroads, a point where we must ask ourselves a fundamental question. Is the convenience worth the cost of our privacy? Are we comfortable living in a world where our every digital action is tracked, catalogued, and potentially exploited? But at what cost have we unwittingly auctioned our privacy to the highest bidder? It's a question that we, as a society, must answer as we navigate the ever-evolving landscape of the digital age. The internet, once a land of freedom and opportunity, now battles the chains of censorship and control. The World Wide Web, this vast digital landscape that once promised to democratize access to information and connect us all, finds itself at a crossroads. A battle is being waged, not with guns and bombs, but with firewalls and algorithms. 
It's a battle for the very essence of the internet, the right to free speech and the free flow of information. Across the globe, governments and corporations are exerting control, erecting digital walls that dictate what can be accessed, by whom and when. This isn't just about blocking a few websites, it's about controlling narratives, silencing dissent and shaping public opinion. It's about power. Countries that once championed the internet as a beacon of free expression are now leading the charge in censorship. They argue it's for our protection, to shield us from harmful content or misinformation. But who decides what's harmful or misleading? Who guards the guardians? In this digital age, we've seen how easily truth can be distorted, how quickly lies can spread. Censorship, they say, is a necessary tool to combat this. But is it a tool or a weapon? A way to protect or a means to control? These are the questions we need to be asking. Meanwhile, corporations are playing their part in shaping the internet too. Driven by profit, they use algorithms to decide what we see, creating echo chambers that reinforce our views and biases. The freedom to explore diverse perspectives and challenge our thinking is being compromised. The consequences are profound. When we limit access to information, we limit the potential for progress. When we stifle free speech, we stifle innovation and creativity. When we let others dictate our digital reality, we risk becoming passive consumers in a world that needs active participants. As digital walls rise, dividing the world, the right to information is under siege. The battle for the net is not just about preserving the internet as we know it. It's about preserving our right to think, speak and innovate freely. It's about standing up for an open and inclusive digital future. The digital world is a battleground where unseen threats lurk in the shadows. It's a landscape fraught with danger, where every click can lead to a potential minefield. In this realm, cybersecurity is not just a buzzword. It is a necessity, a shield against the onslaught of digital threats that seek to compromise our privacy, our data, and our peace of mind. The importance of cybersecurity cannot be overstated. Imagine your digital self as a fortress. This fortress holds within it all your secrets, your personal information, your financial data, and so much more. Now picture this fortress under constant siege from an unending horde of faceless attackers. These attackers, armed with sophisticated tools and malicious intent, are ever ready to exploit any weakness, any chink in your armor. But here's the catch. The attackers are invisible, and their strikes are silent until they have already breached your defenses. This is the reality of our digital landscape today. A world where threats are not always visible, where attacks are not always noticeable, until it's too late. So how do we navigate this digital minefield? How do we fortify our digital selves against these threats? The answer lies in constant vigilance and a proactive approach to cybersecurity. It's about equipping ourselves with the right tools and knowledge to ward off these threats. It's about understanding that every piece of data we share, every site we visit, every app we download, carries a potential risk. Cybersecurity is about building and maintaining our digital fortress. It's about constant updates to our defenses in response to new threats. It's about understanding that cybersecurity is not a one-time solution, but a continuous process of learning, adapting, and evolving. The digital world is a battleground, and we are the soldiers. Every day we face new threats, new challenges. But by prioritizing cybersecurity, by understanding its importance, we can navigate this digital minefield with confidence. Cybersecurity is not just a word, but a fortress we must continually rebuild. As new threats emerge to challenge our defenses, as we stand on the brink of a new digital dawn, the future of the internet remains unwritten. The choices we make today will shape the digital landscape of tomorrow. Will we continue to surrender our privacy for convenience, or will we demand a new paradigm where our personal data is no longer a commodity, but a fundamental human right? The power to shape the future of the internet lies in our hands. It's an opportunity to redefine our relationship with the digital world, to move from passive consumers to active participants. We can choose to challenge the status quo, to fight for a more open, inclusive, and privacy-focused internet. The road ahead is uncharted, filled with both promise and perils. The decisions we make now will determine whether the internet remains a tool of surveillance and control, or transforms into a platform for freedom and privacy. Will we tread the path of surveillance and control, or will we embrace a new era of freedom and privacy?
The internet is a reflection of our choices, a digital canvas painted by our desires, fears, and dreams. It's a vast world that mirrors our own, where every click, every share, every download becomes a stroke on this ever-evolving masterpiece. But as we navigate this digital landscape, we must never forget the power we hold. Our privacy, our data, these are not mere commodities to be traded in the shadows. They are extensions of our identities, intimate fragments of our lives that deserve protection. Amid the digital chaos, we must remember the importance of user control. We must realize that our choices, our actions, can shape the trajectory of the internet itself. So let's not be passive passengers on this digital journey. Let's be the drivers, the architects of our own digital fate. It's time to take back control, to reclaim our digital destinies. For in the end, the power to shape the future of the internet lies with us.